the one, the only. Pay to fairly! It's a life-changing moment when you're working with Bernard Tillard. You have to be studying as an actor like you were studying to be an Olympic swimmer. Ladies and gentlemen, today um, I'm very proud to have with me some, someone who's a very good friend of mine, someone I've known for a very long time, someone who I've admired throughout the years as she's gone from agencies from New York City to Los Angeles, and also has one of the finest agencies in this town. Um, she has a credible wealth of knowledge, and on a Saturday, which is what it is today. She is willing to come and share with us. That is special, but I don't expect anything less from someone who is very special on her own. Please welcome from the Jackie Lewis Agency, Miss Jackie Lewis! <laughs> Okay, easy, easy. Wait till the end. Oh, Wait, yeah, I hope, you clap. I hope you clap as much as at the end than you do at the beginning. If not, I'm going to be in a lot of trouble. No, no, you're not in a lot of trouble. Jackie, um, we've known each other for a long time. Long time. A uh, long time. Uh, you've come to see me in shows. You can talk about that. Um, I, yeah, many. Um, off Broadway show, I did the one Jewish. Person. I did a show called Too Jewish. Too Jewish. Which was off Broadway. And I, it's like an hour and 45 minutes. Of just Bernardo. That's it, just me. <laughs> uh, 12 Not only songs. that, we had my family there. Oh, yeah. and, I and sang 12 different songs yeah. and played 19 different characters. Yeah, it was that's just not, magnificent. That's like killer. Just magnificent. I'll try that. But Jackie's a friend of mine. We've known each other for a long time. Jackie, we have uh, come here, which I'm so impressed. People have quarantined. Wow. Two weeks to be here. They've been, you know... They I've got... quarantined for 18 months to be here. Are I know, you kidding? <laughs> this is the first time she's willing to come out and yep. be here. She wouldn't do it for anybody else. No. That's right? No. No way. No, no. no. I'd have to tell you guys a funny story. These, these videos have actually changed my career because now, before I meet a client, I'm like, just watch the videos. If you don't like me, you don't need to meet me. And if you <laughs> like me, we'll talk. Sometime back, but the last video I did was in February of 2020, and I watched the video and I go, well, you did great, but you gotta lose a little weight. And I vowed that that time I said I will be thinner, and I've lost about 25 pounds since then. Wow. So. Bernardo and I went through. Are you Bernardo or Bernardo? No, Bernardo. Bernardo is my real name. Yeah. And somehow I. Uh, Bernie. I beca no, beca I became Bernard because auditions, for auditions they thought I was going to be Hispanic. Hispanic. Right. Which I'm not, and so I had to go Bernard, and then somehow that stuck. But my real name for those who like me. Like you. Yeah. Bernard. Bernardo. Oh. But yeah, Bernardo, because I was born in Argentina. That is yeah. my real name. Yeah. Um, the thing about uh, you, Jackie, you know uh, so much about being in successful Los Angeles. You've worked with some of the most successful actors. Yes. Tell these actors, which I admire so much, this shows real dedication, real commitment. They're here to do something. What are three pieces of oh, advice that no, you would give them? Oh, no, not the top three again. Yeah, the top three. Give us the top three things that you would recommend uh, to well, these actors. Well, I'm, I'm not going to live it myself, sorry. But um, you can make more than three. I'm actually going to come up with three new ones. Um, one is, and, and I learned this over COVID, because um, I did. I, I spent a lot of time watching videos and um, learning, you know, what what's new, what's exciting out there. Watchability, the most watchable actor. What makes me pick an actor? You know, you could take, someone can take the most boring scene and make it likable, watchable. They're watching you. So you have to make it, even if it's, and it's so funny because the smallest roles are the hardest ones actually to get. Please pass the butter. Please pass the butter. Please pass the butter. I don't know. Who, why did they pick that person? That's number one. Number two, which is like a little, there's going to be like under two, it's, um, who you are, your likability, your training, your training, your training, and your training. 
Do you know, still to this day, I will ask every theatrical actor, because I do commercials and theatrical, where are you studying? Where are you training? Oh, I'm not. I said, oh, do you, have you won any Academy Awards? Uh, what's going on? Well, 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 well. I'm like, no, because it's constantly what we are looking for, what is constantly changing, especially now with these self-tapes, which I don't know if you've hit upon yet. No, we didn't get to that um, part yet. Self-tapes, you know, the industry has completely changed from five years, even from two years ago to now. So you don't get the luxury of walking into a casting office and saying, hi, I'm Jackie, so nice to meet you. You start with that self-tape. So you have to be the best person for the job. I don't care if you're too tall, too small, too fat, too thin, too green, too red, too purple or pink. If you don't get the job, that's okay. But you got to show up with the best skills possible. Best skills possible. With everything going for you. Everything. Everything going has through. to be. We have to feel like everything. Your personality, right. your acting, everything is full on. Mm -hmm. And if you mm -hmm. don't get it, which yeah. I don't to interrupt you, means that you didn't get it. But you didn't give me everything. Just give me a little bit. And don't just give me the scene. Don't just give me the scene. The scene's not enough. We need to see everything. Your we soul. need to see everything. everything. And, you know, I've seen probably 10,000 self tapes now. And I'm pretty good at figuring out if someone's going to get pinned, which means they saw 100 people on tape and they're down to their top two or three. I can't watch every single tape, but it's so important to me that because you're signing in, you say, hi, I'm Bernardo with LB Talent. So they're, my name is there, okay? So when you're saying your name, you're saying my name too. And how do you get a good reputation anywhere doing anything in this town of yeah. tons and tons of people? New agents are coming all the time. Everything is based on reputation. Reputation, reputation. Oh, it's Jackie's client. I'll see that person. Right. doesn't happen all the time, <laughs> but, you know, it took me years and years to build that. And in building that, I had to stay current. And that's another part of this. You have to stay current. Okay, let's talk about what what does current mean right now? Right. What does current mean? That's a what good is current because I'm going to give you a whole different ball game than I gave you a year and a half. Yeah, yeah, ago. of course. What's current? So, I would say being on social media. Social media, which I hate. Like, yeah. What's going on in the world? Right. Able to right. Uh, diversity and stuff. It is a globally, sexually. And I don't mean who you're having sex with, right? Per se. No, the sexual, but sexual orientation right now, of who you are. Yes. LGBTQ, non-binary, um, uh, dis. If you have a disability, it's very hard. And I'm not saying I'm only taking a client because they're disabled, but I have a client who lost half of a leg in an injury. So right now, everything is we want wheelchair. So it's we're we're changing again what it is. But they, they need to be talented, though. Of course, yeah, of course. Not, so they're getting but opportunities, just, but they got to be great. Types. Yeah. We're just talking types. We're not saying, oh, we now. need somebody, and they bring them in. Right. No, no, no. I just took on a client who wears a, 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 a head covering. He's like burka? a burqa? A burqa. He's getting auditions, and I'm not, I took him because he's talented, but I want to explain right. to you five years ago, yeah. I never would have done that. That's right. Because they want different. They want, what what is showing in our world now? Um, you don't have to be, I got to tell you something, the big word now is body positive. Body, does what anyone know what body positive I, I means? I don't know what that means, what does that mean? Body positive means not emaciated, yeah. especially women. They don't want to watch TV, watch TV. You will notice, especially on commercials, I'd say 60 to 70% of the commercials are not these Skinny. We do not want models. So when they want real people, they want real, with real bodies. People. That's what real I got. bodies, real. glasses. You know, now when I take on somebody, I, I I look for interesting. What makes them interesting? I have a girl who she does her makeup like in the picture, and she gets appointments. This is more for commercials. I will say that theatrical, of course, they still look for the types. But um, what, what I've learned over COVID is everything that I knew to be true is completely false. And everything I thought I would never be doing, I'm doing now. It's 
uncanny. So I'm getting this like part two of my career. I don't think I'm going to have another 30 years in. I'm going to be the oldest agent ever, but um, it's been it's been quite um, fascinating to me, perplexing. Um, interesting. But also because of business changes, because life changes. Life changes, And if right. you don't change enough, you become the worst thing in Hollywood. That's the right. worst thing. That's right. Irrelevant. Irrelevant. Yeah. Because How do I stay relevant? Yeah. I got to keep, you know, I met so many people online during COVID, and my bookings just kept increasing and increasing because I didn't sit in my laurels saying, oh, I have a good client list. I could take the next six months no. off. No. Once we got past the worst of it, I was... Uh, back meeting how many of you speak another language tell me some of the languages spanish spanish okay i have to tell you something i've heard every day this week they've asked for one of the above right um wonderful fantastic it used to be before you talk with an accent what am i going to do with you it's horrible absolutely now it's you don't talk with an accent. Well, what am I going to do? <laughs> right, and because it, because the business has changed. It, right now, it's better than ever. Yeah, better than ever, and that's what's so great about Jackie. She's looking for talent, and nothing stops you. The only thing stopping you is you. I have a I have a client. Um, he I could say his name is Troy Metcalf, and he looks like Shrek. And he was on the show The Middle for eight years, and I am fascinated by him. And he's been my client for about. Four years now. The first three years were tough, man. And I'm like, I'm not giving up. I'm not giving up. There's a movie coming out. It'll come out probably in a year and a half from now called Babylon, starring Brad Pitt and Margot Robbie and everyone else, every big celebrity. He's working for two months with all these people because you probably don't know this actor, uh, this gentleman. This was uh, the movie was done in the is being done in the twenties. He's playing Fatty Arbuckle, so obviously you could tell by his name what they were looking for. And you know what? His name was in the papers all week this week, and that's when I say, oh, see, sometimes you gotta. You gotta just keep on keeping you on. Don't give up. Never give up. But invest in yourself, because if you don't invest right. in yourself, nobody will invest in you. Yeah. You know, um, I always talk about Chrissy, and I, I will again, because she's one of my dear friends. Tell, um, tell me, Chrissy. Tell Chrissy me. Metz, who's on This Is Us. She's very, she's body positive. And um, she was here for 12 years and would get a role here. It was called stunt casting, where Oh, wouldn't it be funny if a really hot guy was with a really overweight woman? And I, I could speak freely because that's what the breakdown wanted. Or she did American Horror Story and they wanted the fattest woman in the world. They did have to pad her because she's certainly not that. And I will tell you something. The first time I met her, I still remember this. She had the most interesting face when this smile and the hair. And before she even opened her mouth, I'm like, you are the most adorable thing in the world. And you know what? My instincts were right, 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 and more right. And she's kind of changed the way we perceive what not being body positive right. is. Right, absolutely. Um, Oprah, where the list goes down, and it's so beautiful for me. I have not had to say to anybody in the past five years, you need to lose a little weight. You need to. I used to always tell the beautiful girls, unless you're going to wear a bikini, it's, there ain't going to be much for you. I don't have to say that anymore. It's amazing. Yeah, it's, it's um, great. I'm so happy. Okay, so then that's under two. And number three. Jeez, oh, it's. You have to have all the right resources, okay? You know? What do you think all the resources are? Because I'm going to give you some hints of some other things. So, what are some of the resources you need? Community support, that's right. Anybody? Training. Training. There's one big one. Hello. Yes. 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 Your agent, your manager. What you look like, your pictures. Your pictures. Mm -hmm. I can tell you that I could change people's career with the right picture. Absolutely. I've had it happen all the all time. All the time. Why are you shooting this? Boring, bland. The picture is basically looks like a mugshot. Right. I'm like, no one wants to meet you. We're not interested in that. 
I like interesting, unique, fun, because they get this little, little picture. And first they look at the picture. They're not looking at your resume first, okay? So first you look at the picture and you go, okay, interesting, okay. They fit the description, we'll see that person. And if you are working with a team that doesn't understand that, I don't care how talented, I have met so many talented people through the years who are now working in other places or doing other things because they just didn't, whatever that recipe for success was, they weren't willing to follow the recipe. And they it really is a recipe. They weren't willing to even find what the recipe was. Right, right. Well, how it's, do you make a cake? Do you use... Just um, luck? Maybe luck. Do you use uh, gravel? No. No, just luck. Hey, I don't believe in... You, you know what luck no. to me is? No, no. That's, that's, luck is when opportunity and knowledge meet. Even talent, if you win right. the, uh, the lotto or the lottery, you bought the ticket, right? That's the knowledge. The opportunity was there. I don't... I, I can say in the 30 years, I don't know that many lucky actors. I know actors who were very disciplined, who followed... Oh, another thing that's so important, stay present. Please stay present. I cannot begin to tell you even some of my clients, oh, where are you? What happened? You, oh, you, you at work and you didn't answer your phone? Oh, you missed that opportunity. Okay, you gotta stay present. This is a full-time job. I'm very aware and sensitive to having a survival job. I fully understand that. But even in survival jobs, you get breaks. You gotta look at your phone. Everything's about um, you gotta, checking. Well, yeah. You gotta run the business like a business, okay? Yeah. That's what you're talking about. When I about. send him, they know I they represent know. you. She's yeah. my agent. Let's hear from my great agent, Jackie Lewis. <laughs> Whenever I send him something 30 seconds later, okay, I'm available. That's what I'm looking for. We had for. a couple of good auditions lately. We've had a couple of great auditions, very, very good auditions. And you know, um, what I love about my clients who do that for me is that they're honoring me and they're respecting the process because if I'm spending time looking for you, that means I'm spending one or two less minutes uh, negotiating a great contract or doing this or that. So my, um, you know, I have to time manage. There's only 18 hours in a day that I could actually work. Um, I don't mind working those hours, but I want to. I want to work smart, not work. Oh, this person hasn't called, texted me back in three days about this. This that that doesn't work for me. That's the quickest way. And I rarely drop clients. I'll tell you that. That's very important because if I'm taking someone on, I actually won't believe it. There are very I'd say probably maybe 5% of the clients I've ever taken on, I've dropped. It's either because um, there's no communication, you're not willing to do, you know, oh, you've had the same pictures for 10 years and you have the audacity to ask me why you're not getting auditions. But I've told you 10 times, let's get, you're 80 and you look 40 in your pictures. Um, Attitude, you were talking about the attitude. attitude. The attitude. Oh, I had something I could say it because this person and I won't say the name. She booked a pilot and she was she caused a ruckus through the whole thing. And on top of that, because you know, she just booked something big. I really don't wanna she commanded me to do something. And I'm like, I don't take commands. We're a team, we work together. And she commanded it three times and I didn't do it. And I said, if you're not happy with the way I'm doing this, it was about a check. The check came in Wednesday, went out Thursday. It wasn't fast enough for her. And I didn't like that because I'm working as hard. And I know you guys need the money when you book a job. I worked, I went in every single day during COVID to make sure whoever booked a job got their money as soon as possible. Yeah. So if I'm going to do that, then you need to relax. Well, we talk about the fact that the most important thing in the industry is the attitude towards each other. Yes. It's how you treat each other. And I have to say that the people you know, some of the people I work with, uh, very kind, always grateful, always saying yes. thank you. And the great actors are always the first one here and the last one to leave, mm -hmm. and they say thank you to everybody. They just don't walk out. And it's the attitude, it's, a, it's kind of a family. Hollywood is a very small family where everybody qu quickly knows who you are mm -hmm. and you never get a second chance to leave mm -hmm. a first impression. So you have to be right on the money, right from the first second. Well, it, you know, <clears throat> Hollywood used to be kind of a cliche business, you know, to the top, 
sleep to, to the top, that doesn't happen anymore. <laughs> you cannot be, you, you got it hands off. Thank God we have COVID because no one's touching each other anymore. <laughs> And, and I have to tell you, I had some very interesting experiences throughout my career. I was never had to deal with any Me Too stuff, but um, the wielding of power for women and men still exists. But I think it's going from like maybe 80% to 10% because people are losing their jobs. The guy from Jeopardy, the executive producer, fired himself as the host because he had said inappropriate things years ago. Oh. I don't know why. I mean, you got to watch everything. You got to watch everything. Everybody, by the way, by the way, watches you. Yeah. It's important talking about social media. Write this down for social media. Uh, if you're going to do something, if you're going to be posting like food, you know, pictures of what you're eating, what does it let us know that you're a person that, that you that like food? That you like food. <laughs> if you're, you're not an actress. I mean, you like food. Or you're talking about the beach. I mean, the idea is that we get a sense of who you are based on what pictures you choose. I will tell you, Facebook and social and some Instagram, I'm a little more conservative, okay? I don't want to go on my Facebook and tell my clients telling me that they got an audition. Nobody cares that you got an audition. Nobody cares. Nobody cares. Oh, of course not. No, on Instagram, I don't care. I, bye, bye. Tell me something interesting about you. Show me that you learn to water ski. Um, nine out of ten times, they're checking your social media now. Yeah, they're checking just it. to find out yeah. who you are. Yeah. Because it's the easiest way to do. Right. To find out how serious you are, how are you presenting yourself. Right. Right. Uh, and the great jobs that you book end up on deadline or in the trades. So we all know who's booking what. It is not a secret. It is not a secret. No. Um, and you can't get away with. There's a lot of things. You know, I said to Troy, my client, I said, oh, my God, the way I'm going to present this to casting, you're going to win a, an Oscar for this role. He, I said, no, no, your name's not Oscar. But like I get this great opportunity to use that he was working on this film for two months. I don't know what the film's going to look like. He could be edited out altogether. But I have from the time he finishes the film to the time it comes out. That's my job as the agent. Make it make it big. He did. He's well, working with these. By the way, we're going to bring the director of that uh, film here. Damien. Damien Chazelle. Oh, ask him about Troy. Yeah, I'm sure he will. We, we, I interviewed him. Damien Chazelle did a movie called La La Land. Yeah. Have you heard of that movie? Yeah. Anybody? Yeah. Whiplash? Anything? Yeah. Nothing? Yeah. Anything a little bit? Okay. So uh, he would have come here. He's busy. He's busy but, working. Uh, yeah, <laughs> but, but he's incredibly beautiful human yeah. being. Yeah. Beautiful. And, so I think uh, I got my three things. Yes, you did. Everyone, anyone have any questions based on what we just talked about? Okay, good. So, I don't have any questions. Let me ask you another thing. What is it that you wish actors knew that they don't know? That's, I love that question. I wish that you all, in part of your training, had to sit in a casting office for a day, had to sit in my office for a day, had to sit be an extra for a day, had to sit um, with a director for a day, had to sit with producers for a day, because you guys are only getting one part of the process. And what I have learned, and I have friends in all different facets of this, writers, directors, uh, people who do makeup, um, it, that's how I learn more. Why didn't you pick that person? Jackie, I'm gonna tell you something. She had blue eyeshadow on. I hate blue eyeshadow. Why did your stupid client wear blue eyeshadow? That's the reason why she didn't get the job, yes. So the funniest little reasons are the reasons why that you don't know. So you're coming from one perspective. I'm coming from another perspective. A casting director is coming from another perspective. They're basically um, taking their orders from the producers and the directors. I'm not taking my orders from them. I'm taking my job as a talent agent is to make sure that you are being submitted on the projects that you're right for. There are a lot of agents in this town who do not do that well, and I'm not gonna say any names. So when I see a project that they're looking for someone middle-aged and a 75-year-old woman, not my client, is going out on it, I'm like, 
she's going to be live, live to be 150. How fantastic. So that's so much a part of the process in this is, you know, I don't want to send you an audition. Like when I send Bernardo auditions, he's 99% spot on for it because I don't want to waste his time. You want to go and read for this. They want a Hispanic, uh, Spanish, uh, tall, blonde who speaks Spanish. Jackie, I'm never going to book this. But I want you to go in for that. No, you want to be, because they look at that tape and they go, waste of time, goodbye, and they remember your name. So there's many times I will get auditions for clients. And I look at it and I go, That's, or they're not ready. You know, they, this casting director requested them for something. They're not ready for that yet. I get so much positive feedback from them. Oh, thank you for being honest. And that's how you build, as an agent, the good reputation. Of course, of yeah. course. Honesty is the most important thing yeah. at the highest level. At the highest if you, level. If I were to say, oh, this guy is like, say something that he's not, I'm finished. Oh, yeah. I have recommended, of course, agents or casting directors call me, and they say, who do you have for this right, particular right. role? And if I don't think it's right, I would no, never no. say No, no. They love hearing the no, because then they know you're being honest with yeah, of them. Of course, you're not. Of course, because, yeah, that's the right. way it is. Uh, You've been, what is the thrill that you get being an agent? <laughs> okay, I love meeting new actors. I love it, I love it. I love everything about it. Since I was 10 years old, I've loved that part of it. I love the success stories, the James Gandolfinis, the Chrissies, the Troys, Ashley Tiz, I mean, the list goes on and on and on. It is still thrilling for me, okay? It she is still, still loves it. thrilling. Still loves it. I love it. It's sick. OK, <laughs> what I'm going to tell you what I don't like about it, because you asked me what the thrilling part okay. everything's changed. I spend my day on the computer. Who knew that I went to college to be a computer expert? <laughs> Nothing is the phone does not ring that often. It's all email and email. That. Yeah. So that's different. So I'm very blessed that I I've had I had 20 years in. So I know most of these people. Do you know how hard it is to make a connection with someone on email that you know you're trying to build a relationship with not that easy that has been taken away um, from us so that's the least thrilling part um, I sometimes say I don't even know why I have a phone in the office it rings twice a day and it's usually a robo call they don't want to talk to you on the breakdown says do not call what am I supposed to do just wait but I can I, I can um, email and a lot of my email pitches I do very well with them. No, because, well, you people know who you are, so it's it's a different... No, but you'd be surprised. There's a lot of people who don't know what they're doing. Right. I run into them all the time. Yes, no question about it. You guys it. know the difference between agents and managers, right? Uh, why don't you talk about what's the difference between an agent and a manager? This is very simple. You have to have an agent in the state of California to negotiate a contract, okay? Most agents... Um, I have heard of, okay? I can't begin to tell you. Now, managers are wonderful, and I do a lot of business with them, but some of them have no business being in management. I would not allow a dead duck to be represented by that person. So you guys, I'm telling you this, it's so important. Don't say yes to everybody just because they think, oh, you're the best. Do your research. Do your research. That's a very important part. I interrupt. Most important thing is research, 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 and everyone that you're going to meet. Right. Every, from teachers to anybody, look up who they are. In fact, that's a Hollywood rule. Yep. I look at the resume. Oh, you studied with this one and this one and this one. And they'll say, who else should I study with? I said, well, tell me what you're looking for. And I'm very good at putting people together that way. I'm good at people. When a client says to me, I'd like a manager. Um, I, I know probably 300 managers. I work with about 50 of them. Some of them are a little um, only represent celebrities. Some of them only represent writers. So I try to build that team, and it's a long-term team. I'll give you an example. I'll uh, try again. He had a manager who dropped him last year because he wasn't working. <laughs> a very well-known manager, and I'm like, are you sure you want to do this? So, and I love these, these two people. I love them, but I'm like, if they want to give up, they're going to give up. It's okay. Yeah. So I do have to say something on your behalf. There are agents 
in all levels. There are agents who are the biggest agents and they just want superstars and they're not interested in developing anybody. And there are people who are just ready to go, hi, you want Brad Pitt? Boom, 20 million, boom. They're not sitting around looking for things. They just get calls. And I know a lot of those agents Oh, yeah, as well. you do. You do and know we've had of some them. of them here yeah, you some who are the ones. biggest agents in the world. And if you're the biggest star, you're with her. Okay. And then you have beautiful Jackie who still cares about the craft, wants to meet an actor, and is willing, which is rare, to help you develop. But you have to be a working actor, which is a 24-hour job, not a part-time job. I took on, that's very true, and you know, I made a decision in my career a couple of different times what direction um, I wanted to go in, because if you work at CAA and William are great big companies, they represent great, wonderful people, but they're not developing people. They're, they, and I don't blame them, they don't have the time. If you're paying an agent a million dollars, you want them to bring in a hundred million dollars. That's right. I have my own cute little company. If a client only makes $10 that year, so be it. I took on a woman during COVID, 62 years old, Spanish speaking. She looks like a housekeeper, I'm not, I'll, I'll be honest. That's She'll good. be the first one to say it. And I'm like, I love this, I've been looking for you. She goes, what do you mean you've been looking for me? I said, do you know how many times during the week I see a role for you and I don't have it? That makes me crazy. She said, look, five jobs this year and a series regular on a show that just got picked up on Hulu. I'm not allowed to say it. Yeah, ooh. But no one else, she had met 10 other agents. They you, weren't interested. No, no, because you have a vision of a possibility. Some know what they want, the top right. agents, and they go like, look, if I send him out, how much money can he make? Let's say he makes 100000 for a movie. 10%, how much is 100000 Ten Nothing. Ten, yeah. 10000 that's nothing. He's got $20 million in movie. Right. And 10% is how much? Two million. OK, you want me to work for $2 million or 100000 no. So those but see, different people. My, the, my model of my company, because I do have another agent who works with me, is conducive for me to have someone who may take three years to make money. That's okay. I'm not working in Beverly Hills and paying $20 million. But you love the art. It's an and art. you love the actors. Yes, I you love do. Actors. I you do. love actors and you love to support them. And, and well, for me, I can't think of anyone better. I'm a huge being. TV watcher, okay? I saw the movie Free, Free Guy last week. Was that what yeah. it's called? It not, no, that was, it was meant for my eight-year-old niece. Um, I, I love watching beautiful TV. I just love it. I'm infatuated by it. Um, you love good acting? I love, uh, when Schitt's Creek came out, yes. I was like, oh my God. That's the funny, I, I used to laugh out. You know, during COVID, all I did was have that on every day just so I could laugh. There's some beautiful, uh, your Shira. Um, Shira, unorthodox. Unorthodox. Have you seen Unorthodox from, yes. and from have you if seen you write that down, Netflix? Sh how do you say it? Chitzel? Chitzel. Oh Chitzel. my God, what a great, yeah. laughing and crying at the same time. There are films being made in Egypt, yeah. in Israel, in this country, in that country, and there's a lot of my actors in some movie, yeah. a TV show, Spanish show called Casa de Papel, and all of yeah. a sudden, so they're on that show. Uh, and uh, there is really the man who may turn things around. His name is Ted Sarandos. Yes. Yeah. Ted Sarandos is the CEO and the president Netflix. of Netflix. He's changed TV. He changed television. Yeah. He's given people an opportunity. And he's also going to come here. He doesn't know about it. What's interesting about Netflix is they need so much content. They All the time. need, they get every celebrity to do one of their movies. I don't love their movies that they do. They're a little. Passe. I mean, it's not for me, but there's but so need much content. need for content. What are we going to do? And of course, on net network TV, you have all the reboots. How many times can we watch The Wonder Years? Uh, how many times can you watch uh, Boy Meets World? Yeah, Friends. I wish they'd redo I, another show. I watch on a loop every day. I think it's. Just, I've watched it, and every time I watch a different episode, now I'm in love with Matt LeBlanc because I think he's brilliant. Before, I'm like, I don't get him. Now I'm like, oh, he's the funniest one on the show. <laughs> he's a funny, and I represented him 100 years ago. So funny. It's unbelievable. I, um, love com I love comedy and, dra and drama together. Yeah. Neil Simon. You're, talk a little bit about your childhood. Oh, boring. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us. We want to hear it since people can well, hear it. Tell, where were you born? Um, where were you born? Born in Chicago and then moved to the East Coast. And my parents... God bless them, wanted us to be cultured. 
So that meant on a, um, a, a pretty middle class budget, my parents drove into the city every couple months with us and we went to a place called uh, TKTS. And that's where you get the cheaper seats. So right, for, uh, right, right. Fifty dollar tickets were twenty five dollars. This is in New York City. Yeah, you can. There are seats that cost two hundred dollars, uh -huh. and this is called a half price. Half booth, price, and it's like for forty dollars during the week, and that's what you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I'm from that area. So we would bundle ourselves up, and um, I saw probably every Broadway show in the seventies and eighties. Um, and which 90s, show affected you? What my, you okay, this what's your show, favorite show? Because he's a musical person. God bless him, he's still alive. I went to see Shenandoah. No, probably is no one has ever heard of it. I still remember what I was wearing, what I was doing. And I'm sitting in a, we had like a seat on the side and there comes John Cullum singing the most beautiful music and telling this fantastic story. And I said, I want to do this. I, need, I was crying, sobbing when they were singing. What's wrong with her? Wasn't that sad? It, it moved me in such a way that I knew at 10 years old, 11, maybe 10 or 11, exactly what I was going to be doing. Now, kind of exactly, but not really, because I wanted to be on stage, but there was two problems, okay? When they would say, go to the right, I went to the left. Little, <laughs> little problem. And when I have terrible stage fright, believe it or not, with singing, and I would, whenever I would say, I could carry a tune, it was like this. So my parents lovingly said, you know, honey, um, why don't you go to college and then figure out what you want to do? I'm like, okay, I want to be an agent. Who says it when they're 15 years old? And that's where the road took me. In New York, I agented from, I think, 87 to 9, oh, no, I don't say that many years ago. Um, and then I moved out here in 96, I got married, moved out here, and only represented young people for a long time. You were doing kids, I remember, kids. but she represented me in New York too. Yes, yeah. oh yes. Actually, he's one of the first, believe it or not, people that I met when I had this job and you were bowling. He, I found him fascinating. Bernardo's fascinating. Still to this day, he says things that are so funny, I'm just like, I can't, I, I just can't with you. Um, and that's really, the key is fascinating. Do you want to watch someone who's boring? You know, James Gandolfini, bless his soul, who was on The Sopranos, wasn't he fascinating? They wanted Chaz Palminteri. He's not that fascinating to me. It's kind of like a, okay. So it's not always about being on and you have to be razzle dazzle me. It's bringing all of that who you are, what you are, what you do. You know, when I meet a new client, I do ask them to look at the videos. And I'd say 80% of the time they come back and say, you know, thank you. Do you think I get every single client I want to represent? No, Brad Pitt still is not coming to my office. He should. There, I know. There must be something that, and sometimes I have a great meeting with somebody, um, high profile people, and they're like, Jackie's not for me, and I'm like, well, wait a minute, why? I can't have everybody. Maybe it's because I have a smaller company. Maybe they don't like women in their um, middle aged. Um, maybe they didn't like my hair that day. So I can't take it personally either. And sometimes I meet really talented people and I go, I can't, I don't get it. Like I say it like that, I don't get it. Um, and that's okay too. I have Emmy winners on my list. And I actually have another agent. In my office, he came a year ago, and um, it was going to look different before COVID, but now we work very separately. We have the most different taste in actors. When we submit, dude, when we, uh, it doesn't matter. What I have, he doesn't have. I've never met two people who do the same exact thing, and it's like the best fitting of the puzzle because I gravitate toward a certain type, and he gravitates toward another type. So it's doubled what I've been able to bring into the, you know, what the company brings in. But I didn't think it was going to be that way. I thought we would kind of almost not fight, but almost be like this. Well, why did your, why did your client get it and my client didn't get it? It doesn't happen. It just doesn't happen. And the difference also, and this is 
I love him to death. He didn't want to take on new clients during COVID. He was very happy with his list. That's what, that's okay. But I like shedding. I'm a constant shedder, constant shedder. So um, I knew when that 62 year old woman came on Zoom, I just fell in love. Um, because she was lovable. Oh, she's so lovable. As a human being, yeah. which is the first thing you notice about someone, yeah. is their humanity. Do you know that I skipped the first meeting with her by accident? And she called me and she goes, why didn't you call? So what I started doing after that is saying, you text me 10 minutes before our meeting right. because what happens with me is that I don't sit with the big clock in front of me all day. And some of you are just busy to forget. Busy, oh, it so I make everyone get in touch with me so I'm never the one yes. who misses a meeting. I want to ask you, you're, you've been an agent for a long time. Long time. Long time. What has being an agent taught you about life? That is... It's constant uh, about life. In, but there's you, everything I could that that could be a two-hour dissertation. Um, I can't. Okay, I'll I'll give you some great things for me. If a client should leave, and no, no one stays forever. It's okay. It's not personal. It has nothing to do with me. So when a, when someone calls me and said, I, I just want to let you know, um, so and so's thinking about leaving. I'm like, okay, bye bye. They don't want to be with me. It's okay. So I handle rejection. Let I've it learned, go. Yeah. Why am I going to hold on to that? Nine out of ten times, no disrespect. I never hear about that person again. It's true. Sometimes I have someone, you know, I can't represent Chrissy anymore. I don't have the facilities, nor the manpower, nor the um, skill level to do what she's doing right now. And I'm not... I we never even have conversations about it because I knew when it was time to exit stage left. There are certain times you do that. I represented a young man named Austin Butler. He's going to be starring in the new Elvis Presley movie that's been coming out for two years now. I co-represented him with William Morris for five years. And when our contract was up, he said, Jackie, I just want to let you know this is what I'm doing. I love you. I think you're terrific. Okay. He honored the five years. I got an extra five years out of him. He was on three series. I can't be upset. The other thing is that everyone has a different perspective on things. You know, also one thing I will say, and this is just more about uh, business, just because you're a great agent doesn't make you a great business person, okay? I had to learn that the hard, expensive way. If I wanted to fire one of my employees, they'd end up getting a raise at the end. So therefore, I have as few employees now as possible because I can't afford it any longer. Um, I thought I was a tough, a tough cookie. No, not at all. Um, you need to take really good care of yourself in life. If I am not taking good care of myself, I can't take care of any of you. I'm depleted. I'm depleted. What do you do to to keep yourself charged up? What do you do? You know, I am such a self, who, who during COVID loses that weight? Who during COVID takes on a brand new client list? I am a very self-motivated person. I wake up like every morning going, okay, what's there today? Um, I stay in touch with people. I have very long-term friendships, very important to me. Um, I am, um, I, I'm now not married any longer, but the man who's been in my life for six years is such a great partner for me. I had to learn. I needed a partner. I didn't need to be babysitting. Um, uh, constantly learning, watching, doing new things, not staying stagnant. I'm not perfect at anything. I always say if my mouth is going, I'm going to get myself in trouble eventually one time a day. Forgiveness, forgiveness. You want to live a health, uh, I'm telling you, there's one key in life. Forgive everything. Forgive everybody. That does not mean they need to be your best friend. That does not mean they need to be your husband. That doesn't, need, that doesn't mean anything but that forgiveness, when that's here, you're doing it for you. I don't want to, how often do I actually speak poorly about my ex-husband? Rarely. No. Rarely. There's, it, Nothing. it was the first I've love of my that. life. Yeah, yeah. Because it doesn't. What's it's, the purpose? The it's resentments, and even in acting, you guys are going to get so resentful of the people next to you who book the job. I promise you. I promise you that. 
What is the last message you would like to tell these people before we end? What would you want them to always know? I think everything I said, but... <laughs> um, watch the video again. Watch, watch the video one part more time. three. No, what? Well, um, rewatch it, because the thing is that... I rewatch my own video. I rewatch it. I go, oh, that's interesting that I said, because I'm not, there's no script here. I'm not going to remember what I said about this one or that one. Or go, oh yeah, that's what I did say. And I try to bring a different perspective. Well, every the time I come the in. idea, look, people come to this class, and I teach something, the same thing. But they have always told me they hear something different yeah, every time. Yeah. Because you don't, you don't hear it. The next time you'll hear something totally different. And you guys are getting April tomorrow, right? Yes. Oh my God, you're so lucky. Tell us about the who she is. The most incredible, incredible teacher. I like coming. I won't come tomorrow because of COVID. But I love watching her. The best, best casting. The right? best casting. She's cast everything. She knows everyone. Yeah. She's so humble, and kind, and fantastic. And you guys get. And I'm saying this from the bottom of my heart. That she's coming on a Sunday. She's Let's coming on a Sunday. And watching her is. I'm fascinated. You know what's fascinating to me? Because I think the same thing with. I put it at the exact, so maybe because I think my taste is good as is hers, but um, it, it's fascinating. And one, one thing that's really important, always be willing to learn. I have a friend of mine who's an actress, and when she makes me run lines with her, she goes, give me feedback. I don't care if it's bad or good. She, Joanne, she's amazing because she never takes my criticism. She goes, good idea. That's a good idea. Yeah. That to me is success. What do you mean you said this about me? You Everything you have to realize that where someone's telling you, find the positive of it. Right, right. And I, she's able to do that. She's been, oh, 40 years. Yeah, in. she's been in the business. But I, we I'll both give started her throughout feedback the same going, time. I, let's try it this way or let's try it that way. And I've never heard her say, I don't think that's about it. She always yeah. will try it. And I, Everything. and her mother was like that, too. Her mother was a great, great, great actress. Act, great oh character actress. Oh, she wonderful. was. She, she would have done better now because it's so much yeah. more ethnically. Yeah. Yeah. Anna Berger, she was in um, Helen One Two. Th oh, she's she was a wonderful character. She was a character. lot of movies. Yeah. It was so great to, uh, you know, I started a little long time ago, long. and there are not as many actors who've been with with me, you know, who's been doing it for as mm -hmm. long as I've been doing it, that still love acting. Oh, yeah. I mean, I love it. I'm thinking, I just want to learn. The reason I teach is because I thought, well, I'd learn the most from everybody here. You know, Anna passed away when she was 92. Her last audition was she was 90. Okay? Wow. And she worked till about she was 88. Yeah. Then she got some, she got a little um, older. That's all I'm going to say. I don't want anyone to hear and go, what did you say? So, um, but what, and I love surrounding myself with people who, are forgiving and kind and understand the process. And um, you're in like the best hands. He's all over the world, all over the world. We are in the best hands because we are with the one and the only. Let's hear for the incredible Jackie Lewis. I'm not allowed to get up.